the lesson and it continues the story from yesterday remember yesterday it was talking about peter he was imprisoned between two soldiers 16 soldiers to take care of him only one person right to the human eye impossible for him to escape but now on tuesday god is in control question a describe the miracle performed for peter in prison let's read in acts chapter 12 verses 7 through 11 okay now pay close attention okay follow with me it says and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote peter on the side notice his word smote what does smote mean like he hit him right in some other versions it says he injured him okay let's continue reading and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals notice this too first of all the angel smote him second the angel tells him to put his shoes on get his clothes on okay continue reading and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision okay so all this time peter is thinking he's dreaming a vision says here when they were past the first and second ward they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a surety that the lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectation of the people of the people of the jews now let's analyze this remember all the little details that i told you to pay attention to okay so this is the day before peter is going to be executed okay so just imagine just imagine yourself okay you're in prison you have all these 16 soldiers having like guarding you day and night watching your every move okay to the human eye it's impossible for you to get out of there and next day you're going to be killed and here peter is sleeping okay sleeping now i put myself in peter's place if i would get, if i were to be killed tomorrow i don't think i would have slept okay i don't think i would have and here peter is he is sleeping and apparently it's a very very deep sleep because the angel smote him okay he was probably very deep sleeping the the angel had to go like hey wake up you know smote him and peter also says he didn't have his shoes on his clothes so i mean when you go to sleep peacefully right put your pajamas on you know comfortable clothes you take off your shoes you sleep okay and here's peter next day he's gonna be killed and he's peacefully sleeping okay now what does that show us the tremendous amount of trust that he had on god right now let's read the note because the note like i said it just explains it like so much more vividly so let's go ahead and read it the bolts and bars and the roman guard which effectually cut off all possibility of human aid were but to make more complete the triumph of god in the deliverance of peter the angel moves toward the door followed by the unusually talkative peter now done from amazement so remember peter he was pretty talkative okay and now he's just speechless they step over the guard and reach the heavily bolted door which of its own accord swings open and closes again immediately while the guards within and without are motionless at their posts the second door also guarded within and without is reached it opens as did the first with no creaking of hinges or rattling of iron bolts they pass through and it closes again as noiselessly in the same way 
they pass through the third gateway and find themselves in the open street. No word is spoken. There is no sound of footsteps. So here Peter is walking, but he can't hear his footsteps, right? The angel glides on in front, encircled, encircled by a light of dazzling brightness. And Peter, bewildered and still believing himself to be in a dream, follows his deliverer. Thus they pass on through one street, and then, the mission of the angel being accomplished, he suddenly disappears. Peter's wrists, swollen from wearing the cruel irons, were free from the manacle. He realized that his freedom was no delusion, no dream or vision, but a blessed reality. Isn't it amazing how when to the human eye there's nothing else you can do? God just has wonderful ways of working, right? Now we see why Peter was sleeping so peacefully the next, the day before he was going to be killed. Now, after this, where did Peter go? Finding himself in a familiar place, where did he go? According to Acts chapter 12, verses 12 through 17, it says, and when he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. So at this house, where all the disciples and the church gathered together in prayer, he knocks and a little girl, her name was Rhoda, she answers the door. And instead of opening the door for Peter, she just closes back up, runs back in inside and tells them like, hey, Peter is here. And what did they say? And they said unto her, thou art mad. Wait, you are crazy. How can you say that? He's in prison. But she constantly affirmed that it was so, right? Now Peter continues knocking. And then when they open the door, like they were astonished, like, wow, it's Peter. He comes in and declares unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Now, what happened to the king, right? Because now remember the king? He was in a very funny position because... I mean, the Romans, they were the oppressors of the Jews. The Jews hated the Romans for being their oppressors. And still he, Herod, here is trying to please the Jews by, by killing James. And then he gets Peter. Okay. Now, what happens to him? Verses 21 to 23. And upon a said day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not glory, excuse me, he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. Now, the note here is saying, Herod knew that he deserved none of the praise and homage offered to him. Yet he accepted the idolatry of the people, as his due. But suddenly a terrible change came over him. His face became pallid as death and distorted with agony. Great drops of sweat started from his pores. He stood for a moment as if transfixed with pain and terror, then turning his blanched and livid face to his horror-stricken friends, he cried in hollow, despairing tones. He whom you have exalted as a god is stricken with death. He felt that God was now dealing with him, the relentless persecutor. So as we conclude, of course, as the title of today's lesson says, of course, God is truly in control. He was in control of Peter's imprisonment and also of Herod's life, right? Because he was taking the glory that belonged only to God. And now for us, as I was going through this lesson, I was asking myself, do I really trust God as we should? Do you trust him as God, as fully as Peter did? And are we giving God always the praise, right? The glory for everything that he has done in our lives, right? So let's think about these things, okay? See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.